Are we rolling? Each of the Oh guys, welcome back to my music journey season 2 episode 2. Wow guys, thank you so so much. We've been growing in leaps and bounds to all of those who have not yet subscribed. You know the drill. First things first, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you are the first to know every time we upload a brand new episode of my music journey. So, uh, I remember last week I asked a question, I posed a question to you guys as to what exactly you would like us to discuss on this channel. You know, people of God, when you have an oracle, when you have an oracle living amongst you, <laughs> okay, oh, jokes aside guys, but you know, it's always good to get as much information out of a person while he's still alive. So make use of me while I'm still here, while I can still share my experiences with you, lest you learn a lesson or two from those experiences. So there's a gentleman who posted a question on, my, on the comment section uh, as I asked it last week. So the guy says, Mkululi, can you explain to me how you handle fear? And you, you know, th that phase where you, you, you stop believing in yourself. My brother, that's a whole episode on its own. Let me, let me tell you something about fear. Fear can be a good thing. Fear shows your respect for the thing that you're doing. Fear keeps you on your toes. Fear keeps you on the edge. But when it becomes crippling, that's where it becomes a problem. There's a wise man who once told me that once that fear goes, once you, you are able to stand in front of people and you, you don't feel anything, you don't feel the adrenaline rush. I, I wouldn't really call it fear. I think let's call it an adrenaline rush where you, 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 you get confused. You're like, oh, can I do this? Uh, I don't think I can do this. For example, I remember when I was doing my very first recording with Joy Celebration. Uh, that was Joy Celebration 15 where I did Tambira Jehovah. Now, Joy Celebration 15 was like, <laughs> it was my first year with Joy Celebration. First recording with Joy Celebration. Now I'm surrounded by all these people. It's like, a, it, it's like a culture shock because you're used to being one of the very few people who can do something in a particular place. And then all of a sudden you are surrounded by over 30, you know, equally, talented people, if not even more talented than you. So I remember very well that my song came after my sister, one of my very wonderful sister's uh, songs. And the sister can sing for days. She can sing for days. So remember that the crowd already loves her. The Joy Celebration crowd loves her. They, they admire her. They, 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 they just love her music. And then after she sings, then comes a brother who who dances a storm? You know, the brother can dance circles around anybody. So now, as I hear the intro for Tambira Jehovah, zoom, ku -kung, ku -kung, ku -kung, ku -kung, ku -kung, ku I'm like, oh my God, can I just die? Oh, well, not literally, but I think, I, I guess that's how I felt. I'll be very honest with you guys. I felt like literally crawling under the, the stage, you know? <laughs> but then I remembered that that was the epitome of, 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 my, of my music journey, really. You know, that, that's everything I'd ever prayed for, everything I, I'd ever wanted. So now the opportunity is being presented to me. How was I to handle all of that? So I could feel, you know, with me, fear really played a number on me because I could literally feel my legs freezing. I'm sure a lot of artists would agree with me on this one. I felt myself getting numb. I felt myself forgetting lyrics. I felt myself forgetting my own intro. I felt myself forgetting where I'm supposed to, to start singing, you know. But it all happens naturally. I remember I just said, Lord, you know the hearts of your people. I have tried with my own strength and I have failed. 
This is all about you. May I decrease as you increase, oh God. Trust me, people of God, you will say, no, Mkululi, you are being too biblical. Now we want real life facts. People of God, it helps. Because once I, I say that, I can't really say I felt a, a lightning or thunder. Oh, oh, is it a thunderbolt or lightning? Bolt? Oh, yeah. English is not our mother, guys. So I literally, okay, no. It's not like I literally felt a lightning bolt hit me. No, it didn't happen that way. I remember th there's a calmness that comes, especially after you hit the first line and then you hit the second line. By the time you get to the third line, even from the body language, as I do that song, you can literally tell that this guy is getting more and more comfortable as the song is moving on. Now, let me tell you where fear becomes a problem, where that adrenaline rush becomes a problem if you do not control it. And it's all a matter of, of self-belief, which brings me to the second part of your question. If I remember well, you said, Mkululi, how do you overcome lack of self-belief? In life, you find yourself surrounded by different kinds of people. You, you find yourself surrounded by people who you love, but whose opinion really doesn't matter. If that person doesn't validate your singing, if that person doesn't tell you that you, you are worth something, it doesn't matter. But then there are those people you have grown up looking up to, those people you admire in the musical world, the, the people you seek validation from. Now, those are the people who, who will break you. They will tear you to shreds because that validation you're looking from them, it will never come. Bring the camera closer. It will never come. <laughs> I will always use my own journey as an example of, you know, of, of everything that I've gone through, lest it may help you in some way. I'm sure as I narrate my story, some of you are thinking, okay, no, you're already identifying a few of those people, people whose uh, opinions really don't matter in your life and people whose opinions you, you literally live by. Learn to encourage yourself. Even David encouraged himself in the Lord. Ah, don't run away because once I start talking about the Bible, I know y'all, I know you guys, you start running away. There is great significance in that scripture. David was surrounded by a lot of people. David was surrounded by chiefs. He was surrounded by counselors. He was surrounded by advisors. He was surrounded by wives and many of them, by the way. He was surrounded by concubines. He was surrounded by... He was surrounded by a whole kingdom. Why did a king, a whole king, with so many subjects, have to encourage himself in the Lord? It goes to show that that encouragement you're looking for from people, you will never get. You will never get. There comes a point in life where you realize how fake uh, our industry is. Our industry can be very fake. Uh, kudos to all those who are not being fake. I, I admire you and I strive to be like you every day. I minister to myself, remember. As I minister to you, I minister to myself. So, this industry of ours is quite fake. There are times when people will come to you and say, Oh, my friend, you have done so well. And you know very well that they don't mean it. It's not genuine, you know? So it's not all of those who come to you and tell you that they love you and tell you that you've done well. It's not all of them who are actually on your side. Bear that in mind. And that will help you to develop a form of thick skin and to liberate yourself. It will set you free from that dependency on people's opinions. You should be in a position in this industry as a singer, as a, as a musician, as, a, as an artist. You should be in a position to be able to continue living, to be able to continue going on, to be, con to be able to continue, <laughs> to be con okay, <clears throat> to be able to continue carrying on even when all the odds are stacked against you, even when you're being sabotaged. 
you should still be able to carry on. Only that, only that will answer your problem. So that disbelief, okay, going back to your question, I've really, like, I've hit a tangent now. Going back to your, to your question, how do I handle that disbelief? So it is your dependency on the opinions of those people whose opinions you value so much that eventually causes you to lose your self-esteem. Because, number one, they will not validate you. Maybe because genuinely you really do not sound uh, like somebody. You are not their cup of coffee. So they will not validate you because this thing, it's not about reciprocating, you know. The fact that you love them and you value their opinion doesn't mean that they love you and value your opinion as well. So you got to understand that you, you have to be an individual in all of this. That validation will never come. And when it does come, it, 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 it's not usually favorable. It's very discouraging. One thing that will destroy you is when you hear that a person whose value you, you, you really hold at high esteem has said that you sound like rubbish, that your project sounds like trash, that your project should have never been. That will destroy you. Did it happen to me? Yes, it happens to everybody. Welcome to the real world. Welcome to the real world. So I hope I've answered your question in a way or two. Encourage yourself. You are the only you are your number one fan. If you have not been your number one fan, be your number one fan. You know? When sometimes let me take you back to the time when I was growing up. I remember I used to be told a lot that my voice did not sound African enough, that my voice did not sound um, wholesome enough, that I, I, I sound nasal when I sing. And especially in choirs, in choirs you get told a lot of those things. I remember my primary school um, choir teacher gave me a huge slap at some point because he, he said I didn't sound one with the other guys. And that almost destroyed me. And little did I know that that very thing that made me sound different from the other guys is the thing that would later define me. It's the thing that would later, that would later make me a, a worldwide phenomenon. I am a phenomenon. Hmm? I am a phenomenon. Please, please say I'm a phenomenon. Please type in the comment section. Please say Mkululi, you are a phenomenon. I need to hear this. I need your validation. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. But, uh, okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah. So, guys, in conclusion, learn to trust in God. Learn to trust in yourself. It begins with you. It begins with you. It doesn't matter whether people think you're trying to sound like somebody else, whether people think you don't sound the way a singer is supposed to sound. It doesn't matter whether people think you don't dance the way a conventional dancer dances. Believe in yourself. Get, like, get up every morning, psych yourself up and say, I am enough. I can make it. I can make it. I'm unique. With this squeaky voice of mine, I will make it. With this squeaky voice of mine, I will praise the Lord in a way that has never been seen before. Who knew that a voice like mine would become an African phenomenon. Who knew that a voice like mine would become a, a diaspora phenomenon? Trust in yourself, people of God. If I could really visit my younger self, because I really battled. We may laugh about this. It may sound like a joke. You know, we may try to sugarcoat it, but it's really a nasty, nasty, nasty feeling. And it can leave you with feelings of resentment towards people. So to avoid that, do not depend on people's opinions about you. Do your best and strive to be the best version of yourself every day. Challenge yourself every day. Be in competition with nobody but yourself. I hope I've helped somebody today. So catch you on the next episode of my music journey. And remember, people of God, if you have not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for?